Have you ever wondered how they create those super cool single page websites? One that when you click on any of the links, it jumps to a full screen, full page layout. Well, in today's video, I'm going to show you how you can use Elementor and a free plugin to do just that. So stick around and I'm going to take you through every single step. My name is Paul C and this is WP Touch, the channel where I help you create beautiful WordPress websites. If this is your first time on the channel, please consider subscribing and smashing that bell icon below to become part of the WP crew and be notified every time new content is added. So let me preface this video by saying you need two things, both of which are free. You need Elementor, you don't need the pro version, you can just use Elementor. And we also need to grab the free plugin we're going to use for this particular example. So what you need to do is head over to your add plugin section of your website and simply search for premium add-ons for Elementor. Once you've done that, just install it, activate it, and you are good to follow along. Now I've already covered premium add-ons for Elementor before, and I said this is one of those plugins that you really need to grab. It's completely free. There is a pro version, but we don't need that for this particular video. It is completely free and has a ton of really cool options. Today, we're going to take a look at just one, and that allows us to create this single page navigation. So if you install that, we've got everything set up. We're good to go. So what you need to do is head over to the template section of Elementor and come into the save template section. Now, I've already created our three templates, but let's create a fourth one now, and I'll show you how easy it is to create that template, and then how we can bring that in and start using it. So what we do is we're going to come say, add new template. We're going to set this to be a page, but you can use sections if you want to, but I'm going to stick to pages. I'm going to set this to be page four. Create our template. That'll take us into Elementor, and we have basically a blank page other than some elements we don't actually need. So what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of those. We're going to come down to our settings, Page layout, you can see a set of default. We're going to say we want this to be Elementor Canvas because we don't want any content on here whatsoever. Once we've done that, we can now come in and say we're going to put in a simple single row column. Once we've done that, we're going to come through and choose just a couple of options to make sure that this works the way we want. First one is we're going to say we want no gap on our column. Next up, we're going to come to our height. And this is an important thing. We have fit to screen and we have minimum height. Now, normally fit to screen would be the kind of thing you would think you would use to get sort of full height, full width. So no matter what device you're looking at, it would be a full screen. However, that works fine when you're dealing with desktops and tablets. Once you switch to mobile, this doesn't work very well. So what we need to do is come through and say we want to use minimum height. Once we've done that, you can see we have three values we can work with. We've got pixels, VH and VW. We're going to click on VH for our height. We're going to come through to that and we're going to specify we want 100%. You can see now that fills out the entire page. Even though there's nothing to be seen, you can see that our content is sitting in the middle and we've got a full screen, no matter what size we're working with. So once we've done that, we can now come through and specify the background and some other content. So we're going to come over the style section, jump into our background area and choose our background image. And we're going to come down and we're going to choose something we think actually looks quite nice. I'll choose this particular one. It doesn't really matter. Insert our media, you can see there's our background image in this, and now we just need to configure that. So position, we'll say we want this to be, for this example, we're gonna say bottom center, because I want to show the actual street. Next up, we've got the repeat. We're gonna say we don't want any repeat on there because we want it to be just the image, not a repeated image on larger screens. And finally, we're gonna come down and we're gonna say we want this to be cover. So now we've set everything up in there, we can go ahead and put whatever content we want. So we could use any of the normal widgets and build up any kind of layout. We could also go through and use templates if we want to. Let's keep this really simple. Let's just drop a simple heading in there. And we're just going to drag and drop that over. And we'll just say our people. We can just style that. So we set that to be centered. And we'll come through and we'll just choose white for the text color. And we'll just come in and quickly edit the font. So we want that to be Montserrat to tie in with all the rest. We'll bump the size up a little bit and we'll just reduce the thickness of that font. And also we'll just adjust the line height slightly and the letter spacing. Okay, so there's the first part. Let's just quickly drop in a simple inner section. We're going to split that out to have three columns. And we just say add a new column. And what we're going to do is we're just simply going to drop in an image into the first section, choose our image and we're going to find one of just some people. So it doesn't really matter too much. So say insert that media and we'll come in and just duplicate that and duplicate that again. And we just quickly change those, oops, change those images. So we've got some nice content. 
So there we go. We've now got our new section in there. So we're going to do, hit on publish on this. So that'll save that. And we've now created our new section. So once we've done that, we can go through and create the page that's actually going to contain all our different sections. So let's go ahead and do that. Just come back out of this. We'll exit to our dashboard. We now have our four templates in place. Come to our pages section. We're going to say we're going to add a new page in there. And we're going to say vertical navigation. Okay. Again, we're going to come over and we're going to specify that we want this to be Elemental Canvas. But obviously, if you have a header and footer set up on there and you want to use those in your design, you can do. You just don't need to. Hit Publish on there and then we'll just jump into Elemental and start creating our page. So this is our blank page. All we're going to do now is come over and search the widgets for Vertical. And you can see there's Premium Vertical Scroll, which is the plugin we're going to use. Drag and drop that onto our page and you can see that now inserts this grey bar at the top. So what we can do now is go through and specify all the different things we want this to do, what pages we want to use, the templates, and so on. So we take a look on the left-hand side, you see it's content type, element or templates, or section ID. We've created templates, we're going to use those. Click, click on Add Item. Once we do that, you can see it says, what's the element or template you want to use? We click, and there's all the templates we have. So we're going to click on Page 1 to start off with. You can see now that drops that into the page for us. There's a couple of things we need to do. You can see we've got a border around this and it's not sitting on full screen. So we can change that. All we need to do is click on the actual row column. We're going to come through then and specify we want this to be full width. And we're also going to come down to the column gap and say no gap. So that now gives us a full screen layout without any of those distractions. So there's the first part. Come back over now, we can reactivate the actual vertical scroll widget. Come down and add our additional items. So we've got four we're going to work with. So we'll add in page two, page three, and finally page four. So now we've got our four pages. You can see if we scroll, those pages will now show up as we'd expect them to. If we want to reorder any of those, we can simply drag and drop them into the positions that we want. So you can see now we've got there's our, our people, and then we've got the actual subscription thing at the bottom. Okay, so that's the first couple of things. Now, where's the navigation and how do we actually put the different types of navigation on here? Very easy. All we're going to do is come down to navigation, and you can see we've got navigation menu and dots. So at the moment, we can't actually see the dots because our design is pretty much all in black. So let's come over to the style options and you can see we've got a ton of options on here. We're going to style the tooltips, the dots, the containers, all those kinds of things. So first of all, let's go to the dots and we're going to say the dot color is going to be white. Once you do that, you can now see our dots on the right hand side. So we've now got a visual representation of the navigation on the site itself. Now with these dots, we can do quite a few things. If we take our mouse over at the moment, it just says undefined. So how do we deal with that? Easy. They're tooltips. All we need to do is come back over to the content section. You can see it says dots tooltips. If you deactivate that, nothing will show up on there. So you can see now when you mouse over, there's nothing popping up. But if you've got a site that you want people to sort of visually see what they're clicking on, especially if you have a lot of different sections, it's advisable to put the dots tooltip on. So all you need to do once you've done that is simply drop in the name of the different sections or pages, however you want to refer to them, into this dots tooltip and just separate them by a simple comma. So if I click and drop that in there, you see now that's just put home, our work, our people, and subscribe. If I take our mouse over now, you can see each one of those sections with their nice overlay showing us exactly what each of those dots refers to. If we come up with the styles again, you can also come into the dots section and you can specify what you want your active dot to look like. So you can see we can make our active dot blue. So very easy to do. We can also change the dot border color if we want to. So you can easily set that to anything you want. So you can say a white border. So now you can see that our dot is blue in the middle when it's active and a white outline on the outside edge. Very easy, all very simple to do. We'll take a look at the navigation menu in a moment once we've finished with the dots way of navigating around. Now the container actually applies to the different section on the right hand side, the navigation dots. So what we can do is we can put a background color in there and we'll say we're going to put something like this black color in there. We make it semi-transparent and if we just scroll down the page we can see so we've got something different in the background. You can see that there's now this black overlay over it. Now obviously I'm working on quite a small resolution on my screen and you can set this up to make sure that they don't get hidden. This would normally be on a larger screen but like I say you can easily configure things on here to make this main section a little smaller and make this a bit more evident on the right hand side or the left hand side depending on where you want to put it. 
We can also come in and put a nice border radius on there so we now get a more pill shaped look if you want to put a drop shadow in we can do that as well so we've got a very simple way of styling the way those dots work if you want to adjust the position of those it's very easy to do we just come over to the navigation tab on the left hand side and we scroll down you can see we've got dots horizontal position and you can see we can go to left or right and we can also go to top middle or bottom so depending on how you want things to be displayed you can control that very easily directly inside here Okay, so let's put that back to the middle. And there's the basic stance. So it's a very easy plugin to work with. Okay, so let's take a look at this in action. Let's click on update. Once we've done that, we can then open up the page and take a look at it. So let's preview our changes. And you can see there's our dots on the right hand side. We click and we can easily jump through to any of those sections. All very nice and simple. But how do we get the navigation at the top like I had in my example? Well, let's just jump back into the dashboard and see how easy it is to add that back in. Okay, so much the same way that we added the various sections in for the actual content itself, we need to do the same thing for the navigation. Jump over to the navigation section and you can see we've got menu items and we've got add item. Click in there, you can see we can now simply drop in the different names we want to work with. So we're just going to call this home, add a new item, and we're going to call this our work. Then we've got our people and finally we've got subscribe. Okay, so there's our four sections and you can see once we start typing those in, we now get our navigation appear at the top of our page. We can go through and we can adjust the offset, the position and so on. So we can say we want to put this over to the right hand side. We can adjust the offset from the top if we want to, to get this exactly where we want in our layout. So I'm going to put that to 10 and we can do the same on the right. Again, I'll set that to 10 as well. So there's how easy it is to add those in and they'll work in exactly the same way. So we click, it'll take us to that section, all very easy. And the nice thing is it sticks at the top of the screen, so we don't have to do anything else with it. So now we can go through and style those if we want to. So let's jump over to the style tab. We've got our navigation menu. And you can see we can control the normal and the active in much the same as you expect with any kind of link. So what we're going to do is we're going to come into the typography. We're going to specify that this is going to use Montserrat. And again, we're just going to quickly adjust a few settings on here. So we set that to 14. We'll set that to be 300 pixels, actually 300 weight. And we'll uppercase those. Actually set those to 400. So they stand off a little better. And we'll adjust the line spacing or the, the character spacing a little bit in there. We we'll set that to one. Okay, so we've styled the text. Now we can go through and just choose the various different things. So we've got the normal and the active states, the text color, the hover. We're going to set that to be blue. And if we mouse over, you can see that now highlights in blue. So it's very easy to go through and style everything up exactly the same way you'd expect with anything to do with Elementor. So you can simply update your page, make sure everything is in place. We'll apply that to make sure that all those changes are applied. Update. And we're now pretty much finished. So if we just jump over to our page and refresh this. You'll see we now have our navigation in the top corner. We can click on any of these sections or we can use the little dot navigation on the right hand side and we can jump around on our single page layout all done inside Elementor and just that free premium plugin for Elementor. So it really is a super simple method of creating these single page layouts. It's all completely free, which makes it an added amazing bonus. So I'd recommend downloading the plugins, checking it out for yourself and seeing how easy it is to start building those single page layouts. Well, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. But let me know in the comment section below what you did or didn't like about the video. Speaking of the comment section, if you have any feedback on this or anything you'd like to see covered in future videos, please pop those comments in the comment section. Let's get that conversation started and we can share all the different skills and knowledge that we have and we can all benefit from those amazing things. As always, my name is Paul C. This has been WP Tuts and until next time, take care.